Welcome to today's episode of Invested Success. I am so honored and thrilled to introduce today's guest, Kara Golden, who is the founder and CEO of Hint Incorporated, which is best known for being one of the world's leading flavored beverage companies. If you haven't tried it, I definitely recommend it. I'm enjoying one. All through this episode, watermelon is currently my favorite flavor. Kara Golden got her start uh, in a corporate career. She went to a state school, ASU, but managed to get her foot in the door in a job as an executive assistant at Time Magazine. So she started her career in publishing and through lots of bravery, perseverance, and savvy, she became the VP of Shopping Partnerships at America Online. Kara decided to take a break to focus on being a mom. The real action gets started when Kara discovers that her diet coke addiction is leading her to some terrible health problems. That is where she had her aha moment and discovered that she could make water a little bit more exciting. She absolutely fell in love with fruit flavored water, making it herself in her kitchen, and then finally going into whole foods, discovering nothing existed like this product and deciding to bottle it and get it on the shelves herself. She started by bootstrapping her business and now has grown Hint to a worldwide household brand. The most interesting part of Kara's story is that she kept being called fearless and confident, but as any entrepreneur will tell you, we often feel the exact opposite as we do these things. She learned though that the more she just ran towards her fears, the the easier it became and the more successful she became. As anyone in life can tell you, anything worth doing is going to be filled with potential doubts. And Kara talks today about how she was able to overcome all of those doubts to truly defy the odds and defy expectations. Whether you're looking to break a bad habit, go on a brand new adventure, start a new career, start a company, or just open overcome your fears. Kara is full of wisdom and inspiration about how you can finally live the life you've imagined and achieve your dreams. The coolest part about this interview is Kara wrote a book about her experiences, which we talk about on today's show. It's called Undaunted, and I want to let you know that you have a chance, a very good chance of winning this book or cool prizes, which might include some of Hint's self-care line, including chapstick, sunscreen. So if you're wondering how you can win these cool free prizes, check out the link in the show notes for an audience survey. All you have to do is just drop us a few quick notes about what you would like more of in the show and how we can make it better for you. There's no catch. It's not an email sign up. All we want is your direct, honest, sincere feedback. Now that you are fully excited and pumped to see Kara today, I know I certainly am. Let's give her a warm welcome and get this show on the road. Please help me welcome Kara Golden of Hint Incorporated, The Kara Golden Show, and author of the bestseller, Undaunted. Let's get started. Enjoy the show. You have been a big hero of mine. I have to tell you, I started a quarantini cocktail business during COVID and it was infused tea and alcohol kits that were quarantinis. And, uh, it gives me so much respect and appreciation for what you've done because I just dabbled and it was just a huge beast of a business to get into. So I'm really excited to have you on the show to talk to you today. Welcome. Thank you so much. So we'll have to hear more about that for sure. I'm, I'm excited to hear more about that. Yes, I could trade uh, crazy stories with you all day. I've been listening to your book and cracking up at all of the wild situations you're finding yourself in as an entrepreneur. I can absolutely relate. Um, And I know you call yourself an accidental entrepreneur. So what do you mean by that? And how do you think it impacted your your journey where it is today with Hint? Well, so many people have asked me over the years, like, did you always want to be an entrepreneur or were you born? Uh, an entrepreneur. And uh, I'm not sure if I was born an entrepreneur or not. And I I never really thought about being an entrepreneur. I had worked for other entrepreneurs, including uh, indirectly uh, Ted Turner and at CNN and uh, some people who had actually worked for Steve Jobs at Apple. uh, And, uh, and then ultimately at AOL, um, founder-led company at uh, 
Steve Case, but I think all working for all of those people made me realize that visionary entrepreneurs are not always understood. Um, that the that the problem that they see that they want to solve seems crazy until it isn't. Um, and when you are able to have that experience, whether or not you always wanted to be an entrepreneur or not, you get, a, I guess, a, a boost of confidence knowing that, okay, they probably had hard days too. They probably had failures. They had challenges too. But what would they have done? that helped them to kind of get through these challenges. And so I think that was really, when people have said to me, how did you have the confidence to go and start a company? Definitely working for people or, or even reading about people and their experiences. Part of the reason why I wanted to get my story out there with Hint in, an, in Undaunted as well. But it's those, it, it's those accidents that happen along the way are the ones that ultimately create success. And the motivation, the um, tenacity, the um, persistence are really the things that ultimately make up every single entrepreneur. That is so true. And I love your tenacity. The way you kicked off your career was so impressive. I wish I had thought of those, those ways of like reaching out and, and contacting people. What were times in your journey where you felt like you had your tenacity was tested and you really had to just persevere through, through certain obstacles? You know, I think all along the way, you know, at, at every stage, you end up finding times it's, as Steve Jobs used to say, you know, looking back, it's like super valuable for you to be able to see those times. But I think, look, I, I think overthinking things, um, which is something that so many people do. I certainly have had moments where I've done that is actually really bad for being able to just figure out how to move forward and be um, have that tenacity because it creates fear, right? When you actually don't know how to do something, um, your tendency is to just not do it, right? And, and I think that that's the most important thing that I've realized, whether it's going out and getting my first job, uh, how to do it. It didn't seem weird to me at the time to send a letter to a job that I wanted to have versus actually looking for a posting. Um, I mean, if I wanted it, why not go out and get it? It didn't seem weird when I got my first job at a toy store um, when the person asked me if I'd like a job working the cash register. I thought it'd be so fun. I've been playing with play cash registers for years. Now I get to do the real thing, right? Like all that kind of stuff. I felt like I wouldn't be getting these opportunities in front of me if it wasn't meant to be. And, and so, and I think that that's a real thing for people that they need to recognize is that when opportunities present themselves, you have a choice. You either say no, because you're not interested, hopefully because it's not because you don't feel like you can do it. You can't be successful at something. You just go try. And I think that that is the thing so many different times along the way where I felt like it's, it's, um, it's really about the choice. It's not opting out before you get a chance to opt in that is the most important piece to remember. Absolutely. And I imagine that's why you called your book Undaunted, uh, Overcoming Doubts and Doubters. So I'm sure on your very brave and adventurous journey, you've come across some doubters. What did you do when that happened? How did you overcome them? I think that the biggest doubter for me has, and, and frankly, for so many people is myself, right? I would find myself not wanting to do something because I would feel like I wasn't going to be successful at it or, um, or that I could, and, and when I wasn't successful, that that would be embarrassing, right? 
I mean, why would I want to put myself into those positions? But instead, what I realized along the way is it's those opportunities when maybe you think like you can't do it. I think I've been successful more than unsuccessful. And that's because sometimes even you think about a situation that you're, that, that you're nervous to try, but things change about the try along the way, right? So maybe you think that, I'll use a sports analogy. I was a gymnast growing up. Maybe you think, okay, I can't do gymnastics because I don't have great upper arm strength. Uh, there's a lot of other parts of gymnastics um, that maybe you can develop the upper arm strength. Maybe you can uh, focus on the floor where you're doing things that are not so focused on upper arm strength, um, more about coordination and about dance or whatever it is. I think that instead of actually what I've realized is that the problem that you see in front of you that maybe you're saying no to, maybe it's just not as daunting. Maybe there are ways to solve it instead of actually looking at it as too big of a mountain for you to climb. So wise. I love that. Very inspiring. What inspired you to write the book Undaunted? So I was, when I started Hint, a lot of people would ask me this question, why did you start a beverage company? Because I had been in tech and had had a name in tech around uh, e-commerce and direct to consumer. And so as I'm thinking about what I was going to do next, I mean, I truly stumbled upon this idea for Hint, just taking a couple of years off and being with my family and creating this product in my kitchen. And when I decided to develop uh, this, this product hint and get it into stores, people were fascinated by the fact that I hadn't worked in the beverage industry. And so I was asked to speak. I was interviewed for, um, there were a, a lot less podcasts at that point, um, but much more, you know, traditional kind of interviews. And as I would get these questions, the Q&A um, at the end of a lot of these uh, talks that I was giving, um, I found that there was always a couple of different ways to answer a question. It wasn't just one way. People would ask me for examples on how I changed industries or whatever. There were, there were a few different ways. And I would go back to my hotel room and I would jot down some other answers in case I had ever been asked it again. Um, and after a while, all those notes became 600 pages of kind of a journal. I wasn't even calling it a journal, but sort of an information packet that I had. Uh, and I asked a friend who's authored three books. I said, how do I get this journal into a format and out to lots of people who might not be at the, the conferences that I'm at, might not hear me, maybe have have kind of decided that they don't need to listen to me because they're not an entrepreneur, um, they're not a beverage entrepreneur, they haven't transferred, whatever it is, how do I get this information out there? And she said, you mean write a book? And I said, uh, no, I'm a CEO of a company. Why? I, I, how would I find time to write a book? I mean, it's crazy. And so probably the hardest thing about writing a book was actually editing it down to be a a format of like 200 pages that was um, that was palatable, right? That people would actually buy because people, some people would buy a 600 page book, but a lot of people would be like, oh gosh, that's really daunting. It's too many pages for me. It's too big. It's too heavy, whatever. So, um, so that was really the reason. I mean, I think it leads with helping more than anything. And which is not too different than what I've wanted to do with Hint as well. 
I love that. I mean, your book was extremely helpful to me and I'm so appreciative of you, of you as a role model. Uh, and I'm so appreciative of Hint because I was also desperate, might I say, thirsty for a healthy, unsweetened beverage. Um, and to hear like the journey that went on behind bringing this to market. And now it's such a beautiful, simple packaged product. Um, it's uh, it, was, it was wild and really fascinating to hear. So I really appreciate you taking on that daunting seeming project uh, to bring that information to the world. And then I also wanted to know, so people often talk about entrepreneurs as fearless. This, there's this kind of Richard Branson stereotype of skydiving, but you talk a lot in the book about your own fears. And I'm just wondering, are you different than these other entrepreneurs or, or is there more to the story? I think every entrepreneur has fears. I think that thing is, is that having a vision that is not accepted yet, right? Having a, um, taking a risk, right? Going out and doing something that um, is totally new to people is really, really scary. I think more and more people are talking about those things, uh, but I think there's also a lot of people who maybe are thinking about becoming entrepreneurs that don't really have the real story either. And they think maybe that there's, that the Richard Bransons of the world, the Kara Goldens, the Elon Musks, whatever are um, fearless. And that's why they can go do what they're doing. They're not fearless. They've actually probably been through more scary situations that allow them to be more comfortable with it. Because what they realized is that even with the failures, it didn't make or break them, right? It, it, it might have stopped them, caused them to slow down, uh, educated them, all of those things. But understanding that you can get through challenging times, I think is the thing that all entrepreneurs need to know, all entrepreneurs relate to, but people who are thinking about becoming an entrepreneur also need to know because it's not an easy time. It can be a very lonely time. You are an entrepreneur. I'm sure you've had challenging times where you get a lot of no's. You're doubt, you're, you know, trying to figure out how it's all gonna work. Um, there's there's people that doubt you. There's all of these pieces along the way that you're just thinking, gosh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it through, but you do when you focus on it, maybe break down the problem and, and try and focus on ones that you have, an, you have ideas on how to solve first versus the others, however you end up doing it. But I think that that's the most important piece of it. So true. That really resonates with me. And I love, I love it because it's, it's true. I, I am my biggest doubter uh, when it comes to these things. So your book was so inspiring um, on that. I could figure it out and, and overcome these, these obstacles. So what, what do you want undaunted to, to mean? And what is your like overarching message that you want the reader to take away? I think life is a choice, right? We can go and uh, we can take the easy route. We don't, we can go get a job in order to live, right? We can do things that come really naturally easy for us, or we can do things that we're curious about, that we're passionate about. You know, it's interesting when you're really curious about something, more than likely there's stuff for you to learn, right? And, and so, and when you're trying to learn something, there is a challenge, there is a hurdle that you have to get through. And I think that that is the most important piece that people need to remember is that putting obstacles in front of yourself in order to figure out how do I, how do I figure something out? How do I stay challenged uh, with something? Um, versus actually trying to solve a problem. A lot of people talk about solving problems, right? The thing is, is when, that, when a problem is solved, I think that most people who enjoy solving problems get really bored, right? And unless you're good at figuring out what other challenges need to be solved, I mean, 
that's what innovation is, right? When you're constantly trying to add on to products, that is innovation, that's entrepreneurship. When you're a large company that is just focusing on doing the same thing day after day after day, and as long as that's working, you've heard the saying, you know, if it's not broken, um, you know, don't fix it. Well, oftentimes that's probably the most dangerous situation to be in because that's when people don't actually try and look for those new challenges. That's when people don't try to innovate, right? Because you're just doing the same thing. It also is when you have employees that are kind of itching to do something else. Um, you know, unless you have a trillion dollar um, stock or, or market cap and, and uh, you know, then that might keep you there for a little while. But I think that innovation is just so key to us as humans, right? That people want to, I, I think you and I were talking about travel before. That's what travel is, right? To people. And I don't know about you, but especially when you get the travel bug, there's places that I like going back to. Um, but in general, I love the exploration part of traveling and what I see the the food, the, you know, the environments, um, all those things are just as interesting. Why? Because I learn, right? And I think that if you can figure out how to create a role in your life to make money that allows you to learn, that is, that's the golden ticket. I've always been inspired by entrepreneurs. And I think that it doesn't matter what industry they're in. I find that there's this common thread amongst people who are trying to figure out a problem, trying to uh, oftentimes you, you stumble upon these entrepreneurs who were thinking that their company would be one thing, but then it ended up to be another. John Hankey? He was a Hint fan and he was working at Google. And so, and I'll never forget, he, I was in his office at Google and, and he had reached out and he said he was a huge Hint fan. He's running this thing called Niantic and they were brought, he was brought into Google through an acquisition and he had this idea that he could put these codes underneath the bottle caps. and. Um, he was always kind of a, a gamer, right? Like even before, like he was interested and fascinated by it. So again, he is like, um, he was acquired actually through the data and technology and, you know, the, the whole Niantic project um, was, was really the core of it was kind of the back end technology of it. But here he was, really an entrepreneur now in a much larger company who kept having these ideas of how does he get more people engaged in some way. Anyway, I found it really fascinating because I think most entrepreneurs never lose that spirit, right? They have an appreciation for founders and entrepreneurs that I think is, um, is unique, right? They, they seem like they're a little out there, a little crazy to some, but uh, not to all. Instead, it's like you want, you want those people in the room who are thinking about things a little bit differently than everybody else that are okay to draw outside the lines, all of those um, things, because those are the people that will connect. Hey, what if we put something underneath the hint cap? I really like hint anyway. And then it will make people go into stores searching for Hint. And so we did this whole program with Google for a couple of years. And, uh, and it was, I mean, it was hugely successful. And definitely, I, I still meet people to this day that tried Hint for the first time when uh, that opportunity came about. So with, with Google and Niantic. So again, we never went into Google thinking that that would even be a possibility, but you never know where things are are gonna be headed either. Oh, that's such a great story. Yeah, I met John. I worked at um, the next econ economy conference with O'Reilly Media up in Santa Rosa. So yeah, that's that's clever. I had no idea. I think any entrepreneur has that feeling of overwhelm where you've just, 
you don't know the next step because you're forging a brand new path that no one's ever forged before. Um, how, and you just really struck me with your forward moving motion and vision. How did you figure these things out? How did you figure out what to do next and not get completely overwhelmed with the options? What I've learned over time is the first time that you're in the situation that you describe, it's daunting, right? But then when you look back, you realize that the most important thing for you to do in those situations or have done in those situations is to actually try. And that if you stop, if you stay complacent, if you, uh, for whatever reason, decide that you don't have enough information to move forward, um, that's the most dangerous position because it basically prevents you from ever moving forward at all. And so I think, again, time, experience, um, the more you can put yourself into situations where you're going to be able to experience these situations and think about it as, I don't know if it's going to work out or not, but I'm going to learn a ton, right? That is the thing that I think so many people prevent themselves from actually doing again, because they fear failing and what that would look like, or, um, you know, they decide even before they get out of the gate that it's not going to work out. And my suggestions, my advice is, even if it's not going to work out, if you're curious about something and you think you're going to learn some stuff along the way, and you think that there is a shot that you'll be able to be successful, that is the most important thing, because you're going to what you're going to learn from this experience is way more val valuable. You typically don't sit there, at least I, I don't, before I come into a challenging situation thinking that I'm going to learn X, Y, Z. In fact, maybe you think you'll learn X, Y, Z and you only learn X and then you learn, you know, B, C along the way. That sort of thinking, I think, is... It, it happens every time and why you should go try new things because you never know what you're going to learn or what you're going to be great at or what you're going to be poor at or what, you know, situations will be dumped in your lap um, that you weren't sure were, were going to work out. Um, those are all things that actually help you to be the person you are today and become a better leader, become a better entrepreneur, become a better human. Um, it's just experiences that really lay the groundwork for what will be. I absolutely agree with that. Very, very wise. What is your origin story and what was your aha moment with Hint? Because you had such a successful corporate career and then you dove headfirst into this project. Do you want to touch on upon that just really yeah. quickly? Yeah. So I had... I had been in tech. I was at America Online. And before that, I was at a little startup in Silicon Valley doing CD-ROM shopping. Before that, I was in media at CNN and, Fort and, and at Time Magazine. And I, when I decided to start Hint, I had just started my family. And I had taken a couple of years off. And like most people, when they're starting their family, they're reading ingredients. They're you know, looking for the best stuff for their family. I, I really was focused and paying more attention to making sure that I was doing right for my kids, right? And which every great mother, uh, every great parent does. But what I didn't really think about until one day a diet soda can was sitting in front of me with all the ingredients uh, right there in front of me was that I wasn't practicing what I was preaching right? I was doing better for my kids, but not for me. And it was this, I had this epiphany one day where I thought, you know, it like, maybe I should really be focusing on me too, so that I can stay healthy for them. And I would never give my kids the, the diet soda that I was drinking. So why would I drink it on my own? And that's when I decided, well, I'm going to try and get off of the diet soda. I had been drinking it since I was 13 years old, which is crazy to think about. And frankly, I never thought that there was anything wrong with it because it was diet. Diet to me equated to health. And 
when I decided just to test it only because of the ingredients on the can, this concept of giving it up, it was a crummy couple of weeks. But when I finally gave it up, I saw the significant change in me. My skin, which had developed terrible adult acne, uh, was clear. Um, my, uh, my weight adjusted from uh, 24 pounds in two and a half weeks were gone. I mean, it was crazy. My stomach issues were gone. My headaches were gone, all of these things. And I thought, well, I'm not going to go back to diet soda now that I've given it up for a couple of weeks, but there's one problem. And that is that I don't love drinking water. Um, what I really loved was the idea of drinking water. So I had to figure out how do I solve that problem for myself around drinking water? So I started slicing fruit, throwing it in the water. Then I thought about what a hassle it was to you know, slice up fruit, buy the right fruit and all this stuff. And I thought, I'm going to go find a hint product at a store and purchase it. It's way easier. And everything had either mostly sugar in it. Most of the flavored waters had sugar. There was a little bit of NutraSweet and some of the other um, sweeteners out there. But I thought, I don't really need the sweeteners. What I really need is a product that just tastes better. And so I, I think for, for me, it was really, it was almost like a game. I wasn't doing anything else. I mean, it was, you know, raising my kids, but I wasn't working yet. And so I thought, I wonder if I can get a product on the shelf at Whole Foods. That'd be really fun to just go try. Um, and so that's what I did. I mean, I didn't think about taking on big soda or taking on, you know, the sweeteners in, in the industry. I just thought about getting a product on the shelf. And then when we actually sold 10 cases, uh, after we got it on the shelf, I thought, oh, I hadn't really thought about that. People said, well, how could you not have thought about it? And I thought, said, well, I thought it would take longer. Like I got it on the shelf and I would wait, but I had no idea that it would happen as fast as it did. And when that happened, I was like, oh my gosh, now I got to get more product out. Uh, it, 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 you know, produce more product, get into more stores, all of these things. And um, I mean, and the rest is history. That's such a great story. I'll never forget when I first heard your podcast, because I was in the middle of starting this brand stir crazy. And I had the exact same issue. I always have the same thing. I'm always at grocery stores reading every label. Like, why is there sugar in ketchup? Why is there sugar in everything? So I was really grateful. And that was one of the reasons I started that um, tipsy tea fruit infusion cocktail, because there was like no sugar, which made the hangover worse. So I completely, completely relate and love that story. <laughs> Love it. And I, I mean, I also have to ask, like, what is your craziest day or even worst moment as an entrepreneur? Would you say, are there any like wild stories from that time? You know, I think there are so many points along the way. I mean, even look, we're a quarter of a billion dollar company now. I mean, it's like, I think that at every stage along the way, going from, you know, zero to you know, a thousand dollars to, you know, a thousand to 10 million to 10 million to a hundred million, all these points along the way, I think you, you run into these challenges. And I think that the most important piece is to, uh, is to really look at these challenges or things that happen to everybody. It's how you react to them. How do you figure out you know, your way through these. Uh, one of the challenges I remember, uh, you and I were just talking about Google. I mean, I, I'll never forget. People have said to me, oh, because you were in tech, that's how you got into Google. Well, I got, we got hint into Google because I was interviewing. I almost gave up on the idea of hint and I was interviewing at Google. And I remember this guy who made Cortisani who was one of the first employees at Google, he said, he said to me, uh, you know, we're, we're really interested in starting a shopping uh, program and inside of Google, uh, maybe it'd be, you know, something you'd be interested in. He knew that I was taking some time off from AOL. 
and uh, and really taking some time off from work altogether. I was gone from AOL. So that's when I got in my car and I went down and spoke to him. I had already started to hint and was getting some traction, but it was really hard. And maybe in some ways I doubted whether or not I could actually scale it. I really kept thinking, I don't know enough um, to be able to do what I need to do. And so uh, he had given me an offer and I thought, you know, I should just be honest with them and just tell them that I'm not really interested because I need to figure out this step first. And uh, so I, I told him I had started this company and he was like, wait, you don't have any experience in beverage. This is so funny. I mean, you know, he's naturally just reacting. And I said, uh, I know it's really, really crazy. And I think he felt sorry for me. And he looked at me and he said, you know, it's so f interesting that you're really focused on health because what we've noticed at Google is that there are many employees, first of all, they're trying to go out for lunch and there's not enough restaurants around where they, they at that time, they were just off of University Avenue in Palo Alto. But in addition to that, we think like we could hire chefs and create, you know, healthier products. Um, and for our for our employees but he was like I don't think we actually have a drink and I was like well there you go we could we could supply hint with uh to all the Google employees so he gave me this guy Charlie's phone number who was the original chef and I reached out to Charlie it was funny I mean Charlie was like wait what's the drink and I told him and he was like oh that sounds really interesting why don't you bring me a sample case and uh, luckily I had some in the car because he wanted 10 cases and I invoiced him. He paid me. And then he called me back later that day. He was like, this is really good. Can you bring a hundred cases? The next day he called 300. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I have this much in my garage. This is really going to be a problem because now I've got these guys really interested in what I'm doing. And if it's going to take me, I mean, I don't need to tell you when you start producing product, I mean, it's like, you know, you don't want to lose, they're going to go find somebody else to do this if it's not me. And so I thought, oh my gosh, so it's a good problem to have, but it was definitely a problem. And so basically I figured out really quickly, how do we actually produce some more product? And what was interesting, we were like the only product in Google for the first year. Unlo very different than what you see in store shelves, which we were also, you know, in some stores. We were competing against Coke and, you know, Pepsi and Nestle and all these big guys and some smaller guys. But inside of Google, it was, I mean, it was weird because we were it. And even after a year, they had some smaller brands that were in there, but they gave us so much space inside. So it was like the reverse of what we were seeing. And so they were our largest customer for a long time. I mean, people always ask, like, there's Google re or hint refrigerators all over the place. People would always ask, like, you know, are you guys owned by Google? I mean, what? And I'm like, no, 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 no. We just like, I don't know, Amid connected me. And I think it's a story of struggle, um, you know, to try and figure out careful what you wish for sort of story, but also one of... Um, of definitely uh, right place, right time. There's so many stories in there. Not really knowing whether or not it's gonna work or not. Is this my customer? Um, it's primarily male, um, right? Uh, but because what their goal was to actually help consumers get and stay healthy inside of Google offices and they gave it away for free, um, that that was, you know, it was. I mean, it was a gift, right? In many, many ways that I was even interviewing for a job with, with Omid at all. I think that's genius and fascinating because by the time I had gotten there, I think you invented an entire new marketing strategy, really, because it was kind of this like brass ring that small brands would go after would be to try to get in the MKs of Google. Yeah. So, no, I mean, it was, and it was truly by accident. Oh, wow. That's inspiring. I had no idea that this was like the origin story in that way. It's crazy. And 
Yeah. I have to ask, okay, so is there a belief out there that everybody has? Um, or like, do you have a counterintuitive belief that's kind of different from everyone else? Although you will run into challenges along the way, I think that we're, we're all born um, to experience a lot of different things. And, and that I think a lot of people have said to me, for example, when you go, like people have said, you went from tech to, uh, to beverages. Like, why did you do that? You went from large company to developing your own company. Why did you do that? I think that there's so many factors that come into play along the way. There's variables that make your decision. Maybe they're not the things that are like the top things, but they definitely uh, kind of add to your decision-making process. Um, and I think things like where my head was in um, you know, starting my family and things that I cared about. I had always kind of, I felt, lived a healthy life. I sort of learned um, a bit when I was uh, sort of recognizing that diet soda was not as healthy for me. But I think that more than anything, I've come to accept that we all have a journey, right? We all have situations that change our uh, belief systems, our um, kind of our, our blocks to things that we fear. Um, and I think more than anything, you have to appreciate those things that are put in front of you. Those maybe there's, you know, bad people that are put in front of you too, that, you know, you can't stand or, you know, they're too challenging for you, whatever that is, or, or a very bad situation happens to you, you have to appreciate the process. And I think that fundamentally, so many people believe this, but instead are more likely to stop at, why is this happening to me? Bad things happen to me all the time, whatever that is. Instead, recognize that these situations, these people are put into your life for a reason, and you have to figure out what they're there for, what are the messages, what are the learnings, and figure out how to move forward. That is so beautifully put. I've been thinking about that too. When you connect the dots backwards, some things that seem like they were apparent failures actually wind up being a success in the long run. Like the universe was conspiring all along for, you know, things to work out. Have you had any apparent failures that set you up for success later on that you didn't realize at the time? You know, I think there's, there's a lot of things along the way. I mean, even developing the product early on, I, I think that when you know, developing a product and getting it on the shelf and one day walking down the juice aisle and thinking about the fact that some of these apple juices don't have preservatives in them. So how, how do they actually do what they're doing? Um, we had failed a few times in, in creating the product and uh, prior to even that moment. But I think actually sometimes when you fail, you start to look around at opportunities that you may not have thought were part of the process, I guess. And, and so for me, the apple juice example was one that came about when we were failing, right? We were, we couldn't figure out how to actually produce a shelf stable product. We were about to get kicked out of many, many stores. And so I think that that was a moment when it was a wake up call. It was a learning experience. It was, um, it was an opportunity to actually do something that no one had done before. I mean, it was, well, for those of you who do not have familiarity with beverages in general, um, a water company versus a juice company, it's actually very different. Like an alcohol company, very different. They're all beverages, but they're just different. Maybe some of them are hot fill, some of them are cold fill, some use preservatives. Some, and so the equipment and the people who actually do those products are also different. And so us going into an apple juice manufacturing and convincing uh, 
that owner, that manufacturer to actually work with us and try new things that he had never really thought about before. You, you might hear a lot of no's along the way because we that that apple juice manufacturer was willing to do it, but we definitely talked to others too and they weren't. So, but again, I think like the failures can, I think the, the biggest thing that I've learned is that they, they set you up to kind of look for other opportunities that may actually be the opportunities that will eject you to a much larger um, company opportunity, et cetera. I could talk to you about that all day because that was where I kept getting stuck. Um, my infusions had like giant chunks of dried fruit in them. Um, I don't know if you ever went through that phase, but talk about, I was talking to tea companies and it was like, I learned all about dry sifted and certain cuts of the teas and you can really get in the weeds. It was, it was quite overwhelming, but exactly. that's yeah, I, I can only imagine what you know and have learned. I mean, that's something I'd love to ask you about too, as you scaled from like essentially bootstrapped to the size you are now. I mean, how many times do you have to pivot and what is it like watching that explosive growth? And I'm sure you grew a lot as a person in the process as well, if you can speak to that experience at all. Yeah. I mean, I think that the the most important thing to remember is that there's there's so many challenges along the way. In fact, there's so many things that we never wrote down as we, my husband and I talk about a lot, like we should have just had the video camera running because there were so many moments when you thought like, we're done, right? And there's so many learnings along the way or things that happen by accident. And I think that, you know, the, the most important thing to think about is, is just that, it, you know, with every entrepreneurial story, there's going to be things that are happening along the way that you don't even really know that they're happening. They're frustrating, right? And you, you're not really sure what to make of it. But I think that, you know, you've got to break it down. I think for me, it, it's also the less you focus on how big you're getting and how successful you are, um, and you continue to do what's right for the consumer, you continue to think small um, and not think about yourself as this like giant um, company, the better off you are. Um, because that is where large companies fail. When they start to not be able to innovate, when they think like, oh, we're so big, it's the little guys that crop up um, that are solving problems for consumers that are doing new things that are the ones that ultimately are the most successful. So well put. That's like, uh, you know, David Goliath's story of Netflix versus Blockbuster and, and all of those stories that we hear about. I really appreciated this. And definitely, um, I would love to hear from all of you. I'm on Kara Golden, all of her social media, uh, Kara Golden with an I. And uh, I'm constantly talking about my learnings on social media, but also uh, I have a podcast too called The Kara Golden Show, uh, where I interview people with incredible stories. Uh, my goal is always to share their stories um, for people to learn from them. So uh, I think there's lots of learnings in every one of my guests that I have on for sure. And, uh, you know, more than anything, just know that entrepreneurship is a choice. Um, it is not a, a, an easy um, road an easy decision along the way, but the most important thing is to go and try and keep getting traction along the way. And that is how you become successful and, and finding what you enjoy doing, finding what you're uh, most curious about. Uh, don't be afraid to learn along the way. All those things are really what drive the best and most successful leaders and companies. So I'll leave you with that. Such wise words. So well put. Thank you so much, Kara, for coming on. Really, this is like the highlight of my month. Oh, so. Great. Well, safe <laughs> travel. Kara, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was truly an honor to have you. I loved pouring over your book. I could not put it down. It was absolutely riveting. The stories were so inspiring, so entertaining. You definitely want 
your own copy of this book because there's something in it for everybody. So remember to check out the show notes uh, or the description below on YouTube so you can click the link and enter to win either a signed copy of Kara's book or some super cool hint water, sunscreen, lip balm in like juicy, delicious flavors like pineapple, apple, strawberry, watermelon. There's so many good, fun hint products and they're super high quality and they're so healthy. For those of you who haven't checked out Kara's podcast, I highly recommend binge watching or listening to it. She is full of such inspiring value. I love her spunk. I love her determination. If you are get stuck in a rut and think that you can't move forward on whatever you want in life, Kara will inspire you to push through those obstacles, barriers, and fears that we all experience. What was your favorite part of the show? Let us know in the comments. Keep the conversation going. Thank you for spreading the word with your friends and family. It's thanks to you that the show has become so successful and has been growing so explosively, and it's all because of you. So thank you for tuning in again and again, week after week. Speaking of which, if you haven't yet, remember to smash that subscribe button on iTunes or YouTube or wherever you happen to listen so you never miss another episode. Until next time, this is Elise Walsh signing off with Invested Success, and I'll see you in the next episode. Talk then. Bye.